The Cherokee Marshal Service is our tribe's law enforcement agency with jurisdiction throughout the Cherokee Nation. But their call to duty often goes beyond law enforcement, providing services to our Cherokee communities. The Cherokee Nation has always been a nation of laws. Through its inception before the United States was the United States, the Cherokee Nation thrived on laws and the pursuit of laws and pursuit of education. In 1989, we had the Ross v. Neff decision come out of the Tenth Circuit. And what Ross v. Neff said what it was is, the state has no criminal jurisdiction on Indian country involving Native Americans. Therefore, the tribe had to decide what are we going to do? Are we going to bring in the Bureau of Indian Affairs or the FBI to patrol our lands? Or do we revamp our law enforcement, our department, bring it back? We wrote our tribal codes. We started the tribal court system all the way up through the tribal Supreme Court and also started what is today the Marshal Service. That was the first watershed event in eastern Oklahoma for Indian sovereignty. The second came with McGurk. The summer of 2020 will go down, in, in my opinion, in history as a watershed event from the Supreme Court. The McGurk decision fundamentally changed the definition of Indian country in eastern Oklahoma. It changed what it is to be a tribe and have your sovereignty. We're on the cutting edge of sovereignty. There's nothing more fundamental about sovereignty than, than being able to enforce law on, their, on your own citizens. For us to be able to do that as a tribe speaks volumes for the stance of sovereignty that this tribe has, and we hold that very dear. I think that we, as a, as a tribal nation, can look at the criminal justice system in a new way. It allows us to look at it tribally, to look at it holistically. What do we as a tribe want or criminal justice system will look like. So if you look at our agency, we're just like any modern day police agency. We have a patrol division that they wear uniforms, they drive marked patrol cars. We answer calls just like a normal police officer would. And we also have a special operations team. Uh, you'd look at it like a SWAT team. My special operations team, the SWAT team part of it, has approximately 50 to 60 activations a year. That goes everywhere from high-risk warrant, arm and barricaded gunmen, to hostage rescue. So we, we spread the gamut of what we can do. We have a dive team, we have a SAR team, search and rescue team. So those are two different things. The Swift water team is a rescue element of the Marshal Service. You can kind of look at flooding. Uh, Houston, Texas is a prime example. FEMA called, we sent our Swift water team down to uh, Houston, Texas, and they helped pull people out of their houses. We we're at Katrina, we we're at Joplin Tornado, we we're at Houston for the flooding, we we're in Florida for the, the hurricane. Uh, we get called all over the nation because of the, the qualifications that each of these marshals hold. When I first started uh, August 13th of 2000, my nation number, my call sign for the radio was uh, Nation 9. So I was the ninth marshal at the time, a very, very small organization. And we've moved from nine marshals up to 31. We covered the historical boundaries of the Cherokee Nation. 14 counties, that chunk of land is our historical boundaries. And that's where we have primary Indian country jurisdiction within those 14 counties. But we also hold approximately 56, 58 cross deputizations with state, county, district attorney's offices, local uh, police departments that allow us to operate as that police officer would normally. We will help local, county, and city officers and also take calls in Indian country as our primary duties. Nation 3, Ader County. Go ahead, Nation 3. County, uh, where's your officers at at this time, uh, subjects that are detained with? We put in place the cross deputizations with these local law enforcement agencies to help us to have a faster response time out in Indian Country, and that works out a lot as a partnership. The, these guys right here are cross deputized too. They're just like me. Because we don't know in the middle of the night if if I go to a, respond to a call in an isolated area, if it's state land or tribal land. 
All we know is we got to get to it. For example, like a domestic, we got to get there because it's a life or death situation in some circumstances. It's good to get out in these rural communities where you meet these people and kind of let them know that, you know, they do have law enforcement no matter how rural the area is. There is somebody out there kind of there for them if they need help, and we are available uh, for anything they might need. A lot of times we will go to these areas where we either are related to somebody or, you know, one of our employees are related to somebody. So it's good to know that we are kind of all connected in that sense. We look at serving our community more as like serving our family. So when we look at serving our community, it's, it's our tribal members. A lot of our citizens out there, especially our elders, folks that live in these isolated areas, they have no one to go to. And if you lend a hand, a service, anything that you can do out there, you're going to be appreciated a little bit more. That's the true meaning of, of tribal law enforcement, is to help and provide services for those citizens out there. When you ask a marshal, if, if you'd ask, go out in the hall and ask, hey, what do you do? There, none of them will say, I work at the marshal service. All of them will say, I am a marshal. It's who they are. It's a pride thing. It's taking care of our own. It's taking care of our people. It's taking care of our culture, our community, our existence in this country. The badge is one facet of a marshal. It's a community volunteer. It's a community advocate. It's helping the nation build a nation. But I think it's incredibly important that our marshals understand the heritage and traditions of the Cherokee Nation. To know where you're going as an individual or an organization, you have to know where you've been. You have to remember why we're doing what we're doing, that this is a heritage. We have 12 officers on the Federal Memorial Wall that gave their life to serve their tribe. So that lineage continues. <laughs>